On behalf of the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, the Administration for Community Living and the Indian Health Service, I would like to welcome everyone to the Long-Term Services and Supports webinar series. My name is Katie Tara, and I work for Kaufman and Associates and I'll be your moderator today. <clears throat> Today's webinar is Fall Prevention for Native Elders. Before we begin, I'd like to highlight the main features of your Zoom webinar interface. So first of all, <clears throat> you'll see the presentation slides are in the main window, and then the speakers will appear at the top just above the presentation. At the bottom of your screen is the Zoom menu bar, and that's where you'll find the Q&A box. We encourage you to use the Q&A box to submit any questions at any point during the webinar, and then we will leave time for a Q&A segment to address all of your questions at the end of the webinar. Also at the bottom of your menu bar, you will find a chat box. So please use the chat box to report any technical issues that you may experience and we will respond to those concerns as they come in. Another menu option you'll see is the raised hand icon. Please use this feature when you would like for us to unmute your line if you'd like to ask a question aloud during the Q&A session. Additionally, live captioning is available during today's broadcast. You can simply click the CC icon from your bottom menu bar to use that feature. Finally, please be aware that today's webinar is being recorded and that the recording will be made available online in the near future on cms.gov. And if you would like a copy of the slides sent to you directly, please email ltssinfo at kaufmaninc.com. And we did go ahead and drop that email address into the chat if anyone would like to copy that. So with those announcements made, I would like to welcome everyone to today's webinar. And please note that this webinar series is supported by a contract awarded by the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. The opinions, findings, conclusions, and recommendations expressed in this webinar are those of the presenters and do not necessarily represent the official position or policies of the Department of Health and Human Services or of the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. I would like to go ahead and introduce our presenter, Sixtu Dominguez. Uh, Sixtu is the Tribal Injury Prevention Program Coordinator at the Albuquerque Area Southwest Tribal Epidemiology Center and the Albuquerque Area Indian Health Board. So thank you all for joining us today and Sixtu, please go ahead. Hello, everybody. Uh, again, my name is Sixo Dominguez Cuida. Uh, my lines of tribe are Raramuri and Apache from Southeast New Mexico, uh, Northern Chihuahua, Mexico, and West Texas. Uh, I was born down about, you might know where Mescalero is, about an hour from Mescalero, straight east is where I was born. And I grew up in that area, in the three state area, I say, of Texas, New Mexico, and Chihuahua what is now known today. So I just wanna thank you for allowing me this time to be with you and share some information about how injury prevention can support wellness among tribal elders and ways to alleviate stress and coping mechanisms. I do hope this presentation segues naturally from the last presentation that you had to offer. I hope that there's uh, some more strategies and resources from the perspective perspective of Aztec Injury Prevention Program. And I'll tell you more about that program and that you might be able to share these with your programs, staff or fellow tribal elders directly or use them yourself. Uh, it's always good to exercise no matter uh, what our age is. And we know that exercise is good for almost everyone. Uh, but there are so many things that can get in the way of staying active. And so uh, we have to stay positive. But I want to start by acknowledging the tribal leaders that may be present, uh, whether uh, they're uh, chairmen or the uh, uh, clan mothers, uh, royalty that might be present. I wanna thank you for being here and being an indigenous leader. Um, also want to take a moment and acknowledge and dedicate this presentation to all the indigenous peoples uh, all the Native Americans who have passed due to the COVID pandemic. So I'm just going to play a little small uh, token of my thanks and gratitude to those elders that have passed due to this pandemic. And we need to take this time to recognize that. <laughs> Oh, 
Thank you for taking that moment. Next slide, please. I have my contact information. Feel free to contact me here. Uh, I have my email uh, there, asdominguez at aaihb.org. And like I said before, I'm a Tribal Injury Prevention Program Coordinator in the Albuquerque area. I'm a Regional uh, Injury Prevention Coordinator, so I work with 27 tribes in the Albuquerque area. Next slide, please. So today we're going to be, um, the title of this, of this project is Supporting Wellness Among Tribal Elders. And that's really what we want to do is actually talk about wellness and really uh, it's important how we discuss uh, injury prevention and, and how we go about talking about things. So we're, we're trying to uh, keep it in a very positive strength-based uh, area. And so <clears throat> today we'll be going over uh, the prevention program, as I mentioned, which is the Albuquerque Area Southwest Tribal Epidemiology Center that sits under the Albuquerque Area Indian Health Board. So uh, the Indian Health Board is the consortium of six tribes, and uh, the Epidemiology Center is one of 12 epidemiology centers in the nation uh, working for the tribes here in this area. And then we'll go into some breathing. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about breathing, and we're going to do that again uh, at the, a little bit later. Uh, then we're going to talk about evidence-based fall prevention interventions. We'll learn some basic fall prevention strategies, talk a little bit about assessments uh, and, and some data and learn uh, some simple activities to keep, uh, keep people moving and independent for as long as possible. Next slide, please. So this overview, um, just to tell you a little bit about our program. And if you don't have an injury prevention program, uh, here's some ideas about what one might look like and how uh, some of this information uh, is used to um, really try to improve the injury prevention and, and, and uh, the health of the communities in our area. So we serve tribal, uh, 27 tribal communities and we have a wealth of uh, epidemiology data that we uh, gather nationally, locally, and we also uh, do some of our own work to gather that data. So uh, right now I have a regional assessment that's ongoing uh, to take a, a snapshot and analysis of what's happening uh, with the tribes that we work for, that we service. And so uh, that's actually happening now. And in that uh, assessment, there's um, questions about motor vehicle safety, uh, older adult fall prevention. And also we're trying to improve the data. So we gather a, a little bit of data and to try to see where the injury prevention programs are in our area. Um, I'm also very for fortunate to uh, be part of the TIPCAP program, which is an Indian Health Service uh, um, uh, Tribal Injury Prevention Cooperative Agreement. And um, <clears throat> I just finished up a five-year uh, grant working with the Indian Health Service, and we were just uh, starting a new grant, so that will actually kick off tomorrow. <laughs> so it's... Uh, I'm very happy to work with Indian Health Service. We've been collaborating and um, we're gonna be kicking off a new grant series tomorrow that, that has um, uh, adult fall prevention and more vehicle safety in that. Uh, so another thing that we do is we try to uh, bring people together. And so we, uh, along with some other uh, people in the area, we have a Tribal Injury Prevention Coalition, which is a wonderful way to understand, meet, and learn and grow together to grow our injury prevention programs. Uh, I'm a co-chair currently with uh, uh, Antonio Blue Eyes from Jemez Pueblo and the injury prevention program at Jemez Pueblo as well. Um, so one of the things that we do is we try to bring some interventions that I'm gonna talk about. We also uh, bring tribal uh, participants in to train or we put uh, conduct trainings uh, on the reservation uh, or in areas where different tribes can come together to learn about injury prevention. And uh, also we develop some small media products, some videos, and then in the future, we're gonna be also trying to uh, tie in um, uh, uh, TBIs, a traumatic brain injury prevention in this work. 
uh, we see that as a, a, a need. So next slide, please. So why injury prevention at Aztec and AAIHP? A uh, well, um, just a little bit of data. You know, it's, it's, in, we, we, it's very important that we know why and what's happening out there. One of the ways that we know that is that uh, looking at the data and analyzing it, uh, the third leading cause of death right, uh, for all ages uh, and the leading cause of death for American Indians from zero to 44. Um, in our area, it's, uh, it's unprecedented burden from unintentional injuries. Uh, so this is um, a very, very serious um, data point that we understand that's happening in our area. So it, it, uh, the American Indian population in New Mexico continues to experience uh, this burden from unintentional injuries. Uh, the mortality rate uh, is pretty high from 2016 to 2018. It was, a, it was almost double the, weight, the rate witnessed among non-Hispanic whites. And so among the various types of unintentional injuries, uh, falls and traumatic brain injuries are particularly burdensome for American Indians. Uh, and again, uh, you know, New Mexico falls with the third leading cause of unintentional injury related death for American Indians and unintentional fall related injury was also the leading cause of death, hospitalization and emergency department visits uh, for adults 65 plus in New Mexico. And we work with the Department of Health to um, look at this data, to find the data and analyze the data. Uh, we also have, um, we work with the New Mexico Behavioral Risk Factor Surveillance Survey there's a number of different surveys out there that we uh, continue to monitor and uh, find out what's happening in our communities. Um, next slide, please. But moving on, uh, like I mentioned earlier, we do this uh, regional assessment. We're in uh, the, uh, the third assessment. We did uh, one in the project year one, then we did a second one in uh, project year three, and then in project year five and six, uh, this one is ongoing right now. It's just a way for us to uh, work with the, the community health workers, uh, the wellness centers, housing authorities, social services, public health nursing, different programs to get feedback about what injury prevention work is, is going on and how we can strategize to help improve that. Next slide, please. So I mentioned the coalition earlier. Uh, it's a really nice way to bring different stakeholders together. Uh, our mission is to reduce injuries throughout tribal communities with the support of tribal leadership through prevention and education uh, to promote healthy communities. And we have a simple vision of just serving future generations, starting with the safer today. Next slide, please. Okay, so now finally we've gotten to kind of the meat of things, you know, a little bit about our program, a little bit about myself. And I'm really here just to talk about older adult fall prevention, primary interventions. And uh, there's, there's really about four major uh, prevention uh, activities that we work with, but we also have a, a fifth one listed there that's go for life. I put that in there because that's always accessible to individuals online and there's a really nice uh, pamphlet that you can get. You can order that, they'll send it to you and it just has some really simple exercises. Uh, but the first one on top is a steady. Next slide, please. So STEADY uh, is developed by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. It's meant to be implemented in outpatient clinical settings to assess patients uh, for fall risk and refer them to individual and community support. And they have a really wonderful toolbox. And we've been very um, blessed to be working with a, a physical therapist, uh, Janet Pop, who does a wonderful work. She's an expert in her field. She works for the university and she also uh, does patient visits on her own. And so um, this toolbox includes these different algorithms for fall risk screening. And you can ask your provider for them. Um, if you, ha if you uh, haven't heard about it, when you go to the doctor next time, ask them, uh, you know, ask them about STEADY. And that's an acronym for Stopping Elderly Accidents, Deaths, and Injuries. It's a toolkit. It's a cl uh, clinical intervention for providers. I've been uh, able to implement that. And it's, it's, there's some very nice tools there. We work collaboratively with uh, the Indian Health Service, uh, public health nurses, 
and uh, we'll put on a clinic. We, we haven't done it this year because of, of the pandemic, but uh, in the past, we've had really uh, wonderful opportunities with the um, New Mexico uh, uh, Senior Olympics and also um, uh, the, the uh, senior games, the national senior games that was here that was steady was being implemented out there. Uh, and then we also have um, been able to go to and, and partner with some local tribes here to actually implement this, this toolkit. And so it has a number of, of different things. It has vitamin D testing, a review of medications. Uh, and that's really important because we have, we have the pharmacists, the Indian Health Service pharmacists that show up. We have the podiatrists that, that come there. We have the, uh, the, um, the eye doctors who come. We also have the housing departments who come with us and we just make a day of it. And we have these really nice um, circular kind of booths where uh, an individual can go and just basically just have a holistic look at, at fall prevention, education. And then and they can also come away with an understanding of where they're at uh, if they have a risk for falls. Next slide, please. Uh, the other intervention that we work with is called the Matter of Balance. And uh, all of these are evidence-based programs. The Matter of Balance in particular is um, a program that it really focuses on a conversation with elders. It's usually in a small group between eight and 10, or maybe at the most 12. It was very recently allowed to be taught uh, virtually. So if you haven't heard that, or if you have heard about it, it, it actually can be taught virtually now. Um, it's, it identifies uh, and it reduces fall risk factors in a group setting. And it's, it, it, it increases a, a physical activity, but you know, it's, it's, a, it's its own particular program. It has about 25 minutes of light exercise after about the third class. Uh, there's usually about 90 minutes discussion that happens uh, within eight weeks, once a week for about two hours. Uh, we find that it usually takes a little bit longer uh, in our tribal communities to get this going, uh, which is fine. Uh, but, you know, one of the main things that the program does is it talks about falls, how common they are, that they're very predictable, and they're largely preventable. And that's one of the main things I want you to take away today is, is that, uh, you know, falling, uh, as, as we get older, uh, some of us think that falling is natural, but it's really not. That's something that's kind of come with this contemporary society that we live in. So uh, it's very preventable. So everyone has a role to play and we can all make a difference with our own sphere of influence. And that's one of the things that this program really discusses. It also talks about data. The very first session is, uh, you know, talks uh, and discusses concerns versus fear. It's uh, introduced into in a very nice concept that's helpful. Um, and we, you know, go, we go over different kinds of beliefs about falls and concerns about falling. And then we move on to exploring thoughts. Uh, we do a little bit of exercises. Uh, and you actually walk away with a book. And I actually uh, have been able to teach uh, community members to, to teach this class uh, in their own communities. So I, I'm a master trainer at, uh, as a matter of balance program. And then we have coaches who actually go into the community that are from the community and teach it, which is a really nice way uh, to run a fall prevention program. Uh, session five talks more about managing concerns about falling, and then it gets into recognizing uh, different behaviors. And then you start to recognize that fall hazards in the home and community. And then we really start to talk about practicing um, no fall habits and also fall prevention, then we kind of put the whole program together around the last class. So next slide, please. That's a matter of balance. Tai Chi for arthritis and fall prevention. Uh, as I'm talking about this, I wanna also mention that, you know, we're gonna do a little bit of the exercise. I'm just gonna kind of go through them in a little while. So um, something to look forward to. Um, <clears throat> tai Chi for arthritis and fall prevention is also a nice program. Each one of these programs has their own unique way. And so it's nice because elders have a choice uh, to enter a matter of balance or they can go to Tai Chi. Uh, and then I'm gonna talk about another one after this, but Tai Chi is, is really um, a very nice way. It's gentle. It has a very meditative process. Uh, it's it's uh, 
you know, a CDC evidence-based program. Uh, both of the programs have a lot of the same movements incorporated for Tai Chi. So there's the Tai Chi for arthritis and fall prevention, which we're finding that arthritis uh, and fall prevention are really linked together. And also those, those two things, are, you know, for our elders, uh, they have that in common as well. So this program kind of bundles that together. And there's really some very simple movement that, that accompanies this. And it's very effective for fall prevention. Uh, you know, it's uh, consistent with um, instructor training that's worldwide. It, tai Chi does come from, from China. It's an ancient uh, art form. Uh, it's been evidence-based and brought into the United States. And it's really helpful for, for elders. And there's a, a there's, I'm going to go through a couple of examples. Um, but uh, older people are more likely to fall, which can cause serious injury. So the causes of falls in the elderly include muscle weakness, poor balance, vision, lack of confidence, moving about, and the effect of medication. Uh, so like uh, many studies, uh, official government studies uh, with Tai Chi in them have been one of the most effective approaches they're finding to prevent falls. All right, next slide, please. Uh, I'm also uh, a, a Tai Chi instructor, and I'm getting ready to launch uh, uh, a number of different classes that are going to be virtual. Tai Chi will be one of them. Matter of Balance will be one of them. And then also, uh, recently, I was um, blessed to be able to uh, gain a certification uh, to teach enhanced fitness. And this is also for fall prevention. It's a, a nice evidence-based program that's different than the, the last two I just discussed. It's, uh, it is also um, more of a moderate exercise program. So it's, it's a full hour of fun. Uh, you know, a typical class, uh, participants will experience um, uh, in, from, a, from a certified instructor that, have, that has special training to bring out the physical best from uh, older adults which is wonderful. I mean, when do you hear that? The physical best, bringing out the physical best from older adults. So I know there's many of you out there and you're great. And this is one way to get the blood flowing to the muscles. It starts out with, all of these start out with warm up exercises. So that's, that's one of the things that, that all of these have in common. Uh, enhanced fitness uh, starts out with five minutes of warm up to get the blood flowing. Then it moves into a 20 minute aerobic workout. And I'm gonna go a little bit over that. Uh, it gets participants moving to do optional, uh, uh, optimum uh, movement that includes music. This is one of the classes that uh, actually you can have music. Uh, it's not allowed usually in a matter of balance. Tai Chi, typically I haven't seen too much music. Sometimes there is, but this one actually encourages that there's lively music and, and they actually want uh, to have like 128 beats per minute, which is, you know, it's not that slow. It gets you excited. It gets you moving. And I'm really enjoying uh, being trained up in this and getting ready to launch this class. After the 20 minute aerobic workout, uh, then you do a five minute cool down. And then after the cool down, there's a 20 minute strength training workout. Uh, and after about the third, fourth class, uh, you all, uh, there's going to be, uh, you know, the strength training will incorporate some, some soft weights, very minimal weights on the arms and legs uh, from, from just a half pound uh, upwards. And that, that's part of this program, which is different than the others. And then after the strength training, there's about a 10 minute stretching workout to keep the muscles flexible. And so it's very uh, holistic. We start with the warm up. 20 minutes of aerobic, five minute cool down, 20 minutes strength training, and then a 10 minute stretching workout, uh, which is nice. And then, um, you know, these are dynamic and static. Uh, the balance, there's some balance exercises in there throughout the class. There's lots of opportunities to make new friends and acquaintances. Right now through Zoom, it's, it's a little bit more difficult, but uh, typically a class is, uh, starts 15 minutes before the exercises begin. So you get to talk and and share some things with each other. And then, um, you know, uh, it, it has, it, it can also be taught seated. There's mixed classes. Uh, some individuals can be using a chair to exercise and that's okay. Uh, others can be standing up, which is wonderful as well. It improves the function, physical function, and it decreases depression. Uh, it protects against falls and fall injury. 
It also has a social benefit. Uh, it promotes physical active lifestyle. Um, it reduces medic, uh, medical care and utilization costs. It decreases unplanned hospitalizations. And also it's known to decrease the mortality rates in individuals who participate. So uh, next slide, please. That's enhanced fitness. And that's the moderate exercise program. Next, I wanna talk about uh, this other uh, wonderful program from the National Institute on Aging. It's called Go For Life. And this one is nice because it has a really nice little booklet that's very accessible. Uh, it has instructions in there. And it also talks about overcoming barriers, uh, you know, trying to find time to exercise. It talks about that. Uh, it's talk, it talks, uh, you know, trying to exercise the first thing in the morning is good. Combining physical activity with a task that you're already doing as part of your normal day, such as if you have a dog walking your dog, or if you're doing household chores, you can incorporate that as part of your exercise. If you don't have 30 minutes to be active, you can look for three 10 minute periods. Uh, as you progress, you can add another 10 minute session uh, to hit your goal. Uh, that's the recommendation for this program. And then it, it also uh, has um, a plan. It has a wonderful exercise plan. And, and this plan actually can be put together with any, any other exercise plan, but it's just a simple form. It's just reminding us that we can make exercise interesting and enjoyable. And there's a way just to document that, to track your activities or to pick up uh, the pace or to try some new activities to keep your interest alive. Um, you know, I've, I've been trying to keep my interests alive uh, with this pandemic, and so I've been going to the river to walk, and then I've also done some walking around home, and I've, I've done a little bit of other workouts, and on top of trying to continue to uh, learn and enhance fitness, Tai Chi, and a matter of balance. Uh, but Go For Life is also another holistic program. It's, it's, a, it's trying to make physical activity into a regular habit. So, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to spend money for these programs. Um, it, it, they provide energy for you. If you're tired or you're, you're feeling um, different some days, actually exercise will increase your energy. So moderate activity can help you reduce fatigue. It can help manage stress or prevent, uh, prevent or delay disease. And then the exercise itself uh, usually has four different types and that's endurance, strength, balance, and flexibility. So, uh, you know, these, these can be done. Uh, it, they're not hard exercises and you always wanna do the ones that are okay, that they feel good to you. If something hurts, you know, don't do it. Always check with your, your physician. If you have any kind of, of situation, a health situation, you check with them first. All of these programs require uh, you know, a, a little checklist to make sure that uh, you're okay with doing these exercises. And if you're not sure, you always check with your physician before uh, starting your exercise program. So next slide, please. Great. So um, we're moving along. Hopefully you're, you're ca uh, catching this information. I'm trying to get to the part, the, the meat part, which is the, the meat and potatoes, which is gonna be the exercise and we're coming up on that. But I just wanna share some of our partnership and, and I wanna say shouts out to the Indian Health Service uh, people out there. If there's anybody on or people who work or have worked in the Indian Health Service, shouts out to you. Uh, they have a wonderful injury prevention program. I'm happy to be part of it myself and collaborate with the Indian Health Service. Uh, also, um, the New Mexico New Mexico Department of Health has some wonderful people out there. So Tierra, if you're listening, shouts out to you. Uh, I'm, I've been um, uh, recently and um, came to know the Kaufman Associates uh, family. Uh, so I'm really happy to be working with them. I also work with the National Indian Council on Aging. You may, may have seen me do some presentations with them. They're, they're down the road from our office, so we collaborate a lot. Shouts out to Becky and Larry Curley and all the people at the National Indian Council on Aging and uh, recently with the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid. And so we have all these different partnerships. We partner with law enforcement. I'm also part of the New Mexico Injury Prevention uh, Coalition. I'm part of the Steering Committee, uh, Falls Prevention Coalition. Uh, also um, partnering recently with the Native American Parent uh, Professional Resource here in Albuquerque that works with uh, you know, they have over 500 
families that were that were um, beginning to do some work with, uh, and then all the tribal leadership and offices and programs around the area. So these are just some of our partners. Next slide, please. So I want to get into um, just taking a moment. Everybody just take a moment. And we're going to just start to talk a little bit and go through some exercises. But I just want to take a moment and breathe. So, so uh, as you breathe, just breathe in through your nose. And, and as you breathe in, you're actually trying to fill your belly like a balloon. So sometimes throughout the years, we've kind of lost our way of breathing. And, and so typically when we breathe in, sometimes we don't expand our belly. But when we breathe in, we need to expand our belly. And then when we breathe out, you contract that as if you're going to try to touch the back of your spine with your belly. So there's just some really easy ways to just relax, bring more oxygen in, use your nose. And we're finding that when you do breathe through your nose, if you're out there doing a chore or you're exercising, if you're breathing through your nose, you're gonna be holding on to 40% more of the water in your body. So you'll stay hydrated. And that's one of the things that we have um, as Apache people, you know, they say our hands are here to protect these four ways, our eyes, our nose, our ears, and our mouth. And, and our nose is really important. It, it, it protects us. It helps us to gain strength. If we use that breathing through our nose, it's gonna give us strength. It's gonna help our, our our lungs get bigger, and, and we'll actually find that it's 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 wonderful for meditation as well. Just listening to our own breath, trying to breathe through our nose as we breathe in. You try to make your belly bigger as you breathe out. You try to squeeze that belly in. That's just a simple um, breath technique. I think I'm gonna go over a couple of items here. And next slide, please. And that's this weekly exercise plan that I mentioned. It's a physical activity plan. It's really easy. Uh, it just has the dates there, but you know, it has an endurance, an upper body, uh, the lower body strength, the balance, the flexibility. Uh, so it's, it's just a physical activity plan. Uh, you, you should have a link in the chat there uh, to be able to access that. Again, it's from um, NIH, Go For Life. Next slide, please. So, <clears throat> Our go for life to go workout. It has it, it's just a mini exercise guide. Uh, it has um, safe ways that comes first. You have to always think about your safety in any exercise plan. It's a lot like life, you know. First, first, and you have to be safe. So if you haven't had regular checkups, you want to talk with your doctor and and just talk about what you plan to do. If you're going to start an exercise program. Just let them know what's happening. They, they know uh, what's going on with you. So they can say, maybe do this, modify your program. Or you might do that to make it more safer. Always listen to your body um, to do what you can do for as long as you can. We want you to be comfortable while you're doing things. And so you want to always drink plenty of water. Unless, you know, the doctor has recommended that you limit fluids. and But always have water. Uh, then also... One of the things that we uh, always say is that you have to have com comfortable clothes so um, they'll let you move freely. That's including your shoes. And if you haven't seen a foot doctor, we recommend you checking, uh, going to a podiatrist or having your foot checked at least once a year. As we get older, we need to make sure our feet are in good health. Next slide, please. So at Aztec, uh, one of the things that we do, and I mentioned earlier, is we develop small media products that are culturally relevant to our population, to our people. And so uh, this is a home fall prevention checklist for elders. Uh, it's, it's just two pages. It's front and back. And we have a tab that we usually just, we tear it off and we provide it to individuals at different places, health fairs. Uh, we send it to the uh, Indian Health Service clinics or hospitals. And doctors have this, uh, and they provide this to some of their um, tribal elders and their patients. This is just a way for you to look at your home and just kind of go through it in a, in a methodical way to check your, your uh, stairs, your entrance, the floors, the kitchen, you know, 
your bedrooms and just to check the things that you can do to prevent falls. There's some simple things we can do to prevent falls. A lot of the falls are happening at home. So we wanna really look at the home. Now with the pandemic, we're even home more. So we need to try to get the clutter away and try to see what, what is it that gonna make our home safer and make it easier for us to get around. Next slide, please. Another thing that we do is we update this elder fall prevention fact sheet. As an epidemiology center, that's one of our specialties is, is, is looking at data, analyzing data, and then putting it out to the community uh, in a way that's gonna be easily understood. So this is a fact sheet that we have, it's downloadable for free. You can go to our website and get it. If you need some, I can send some your way as well, uh, free of charge. Um, it just has some very simple things like I mentioned before, falls are the top cause of injury and deaths for American Indian adults 65 and plus. Uh, in our area, one in three, American Indian adults age 45 in New Mexico fell at least one time uh, in the past uh, 12 months. So there's some statistics here on the front page. And then uh, there's a little more details about the home with a little schematic. A lot of it is also talked about in that previous checklist, but this is a nice fold out that gives you some visuals. And then there's some risk factors on page three that you can look at, you know, um, our risk uh, of falls increases with age, you know, uh, home hazards, weak legs and muscles, lack of vitamin D. And a lot of these things are covered in these exercise programs, including especially the, the steady toolkit that I mentioned, first of all, that intervention that is provided with a the physical therapist. And then the last page uh, has some uh, ideas of what you could do to prevent falls, some, just four basic things. And then there's some links there you can go to to get further information and updated information. So with that, did everybody get a chance to breathe? I think we can probably go full, full scale now. <clears throat> Wonderful. Great, so how are y'all feeling? Wow. Good, good, good. You're feeling good today. Wonderful, wonderful. I had a fire earlier and then it, it went out. I got up at six this morning and I turned it on and then I just let it go out because it's nice and warm now. In fact, I'm going to take this off as I have to follow my own rules to get comfortable. So we're doing well. It looks like we're perfect timing. So what I want to do is just, again, let's just breathe through our nose. I'm going to go through a couple of of these uh, interventions with you. I'm gonna give you some simple tips. I'm gonna show you some simple exercises. I'm here at my house. Uh, this is a traditional adobe house. I love to do woodworking. I love to, to be involved in traditional homemaking. And so this is one of our homes that we were able to design and build. And I'm happy to be here with you. And greetings to all of you out in the Indian country. Uh, it's, it's one way for us to be together, even though we're not physical, but uh, I hope that you're doing well in your home. Uh, I hope that so far you've, you've gained some knowledge about what you could do, what you might do in the future to increase your, your strength, your balance, and also your space. And so let's, let's practice that breathing one more time. I want you to just relax. If you want to, you can take a second and just clear five, five feet of your space. If you, if you have time and you feel like going through some of these exercises, again, only if, if you're okay. If you, if you need to just watch, that's fine too. If you want to sit in a chair, that's fine. But I'm going to go through some exercises. And all you need really is about five feet of space around you. So if you can do that, that's, that's great. But let's just start with our breathing. So we want to breathe through our nose again. You can just relax. We get calm and you can just feel and hear that breath moving in and out. So as you can, as you exhale, you want to move that, that belly and you inhale, you want to blow up that balloon here. So you can actually put your hands there on your belly and say, when you, when you breathe in, you try to contract that belly and then when you breathe it out, 
you're trying to push the belly in a little bit and and you can even assist yourself with hands gently you can just even slightly ever so slightly just push in with your hands good good wonderful wonderful okay so i'm going to step back here a little bit hopefully you can see all my feet i think you can so I'm going to show you a few exercises and steady the way that you do some fall assessments to find out where individuals are as far as as far as their fall risk is. So steady has some very simple, I don't want to call them tests, I just want to call them an assessment. Uh, and one of the things that steady does, and so a good thing to do is to get a chair. So I have this chair here. Uh, what I recommend is to get a chair like this that is is metal. That's the best. If you have one that has a cushion on the bottom, that's the best. Right now I have this one. I have this other one that I'm going to use, but I'm going to use this one for this part of steady. So you want to make sure there's no wheels on the chairs that you sit in. We just don't need wheels on our chairs. So let's make sure that that there's no wheels. If you can get one that's open here, or if it has sturdy uh, side uh, handles, you can get one of those too. But steady, one of the things in steady is just, it's, it's called a, a, a seated chair stand. So you can, and it's actually an exercise in and of itself. If you have some time in the daytime, you just sit down, make sure that you're nice and, and, and sturdy here. Everything's okay around you. And you just, you can just put your hands here and you just stand up. You just stand up. Make sure that when you sit back down that that chair is not moving. You just sit down and you just stand up. That's actually one of the things that we check with individuals to see where they are as far as fall risk. Seated chair stand, okay? If you have a few minutes during the day, find your spot and just practice that. It's going to help you. It helps uh, these muscles here. It helps your lower back. It, it helps for you to actually see where you are as far as, can I get up from a chair on my own? If you can't, you can use your hands. And then hopefully, once you start doing these, you're, you get a little bit stronger. You start to activate those muscles and you gain some strength. Okay. That's one of the things we do for steady. We see how many you can do. Let's just say in 30 seconds. How many of these can you do? You want to make sure you go all the way up and sit down. You keep your feet flat on the ground, okay? Slightly open. Okay, that's one. Also for steady is that we, we try to ask an individual if they can balance on one foot, okay? So, First, we usually say, make sure that there's a table or if you have a chair, make sure you have access to something because if you can't do that, we need you to make sure that you're balanced. You have a way to say, oh, I'm off balance. I can hold myself here, okay? So, but the exercise itself and also it's, a, it's an assessment is just, can you hold yourself with one on one leg? I'm over here looking at the screen and I'm like, whoa. So that's just, and then you always want to do it on both feet. So then you check the other side, okay? That's one of the things. You want to keep your leg up back over here. And you want to just balance. If you have some time in the day, that's a great way to increase your balance right there. Make sure that you have a chair or a, a table ne next to you. Because if you just get unbalanced, you can just put your hand down. And even if you can't balance, you can start learning to balance by having that table there, okay? So that's, that's one. Another thing for steady is you can just try to put one foot in front of the other and make sure you have the table there, okay? You can just try to balance yourself one foot in front of the other, okay? And then make sure you switch. If you, if you need to balance yourself, put your hand here, switch legs and you just balance, okay? That's, that's a couple of things from steady. All right, so I'm gonna move on. I went over matter of balance next. So in matter of balance, 
uh, one of the things that we, we do to warm up, we just did the breathing. You can breathe to warm up. That's one of the first things we do. It's just practice uh, acknowledging your breath and becoming aware of your breath. That's really important. And then the other one is just like a, a good morning stretch. So if you're seated, you can do this seated as well. You can, you can just, if you're on, when you wake up in the morning, you can get on the, set, the, the side of your bed, you come up and you're just there. You're giving yourself some breaths every morning when you wake up. Think about the beautiful day. We you think about the nice earth, the moon, the sky, the wonderful air, and we're just breathing. And then just go ahead and give yourself a morning stretch. Just put one arm in front of the other, and then try to do the other one, okay? Stretch that. Oh, I almost want to yawn right there. All right? You can do that. And then while you're there, you can also do stoles. And, and, and a lot of these are going to be, you know, done on all these interventions. It's different kinds of exercise tools. You can just roll your shoulders. You can go back and go back and go forward and go forward and go forward. You can do a few of them and you can work up. But if you do a little bit every day, even if you just do three shoulder rolls every day when you wake up, that's going to help you. It, it relaxes the muscles. It makes you aware of where your body's at. Uh, the next thing we'll do, uh, and you always want to, if you do your shoulder rolls, you go forward and then make sure you go back. And you can make them big or as small as you want, whatever's comfortable. If you feel pain, don't do it. If it feels good, you can continue doing it. That's one of the main rules. Always have some water. Uh, make sure that you have everything you need, a clear space. All right, so um, I'm gonna do another exercise. It's just a simple one. It's, just, it's called a diagonal arm press. And so what you wanna do is you wanna start, in any of these, you can start with your left, your right. If it's your left foot, your right foot, it doesn't matter which side you start as long as you do both sides. And that's true for all of these exercises. You just wanna have some balance. So uh, if you start with your left arm, you can just bring your, your left arm uh, straight to the, press to the right. And you can bring that, you know, as, as much as you think. Uh, you wanna start a little bit at a time if you haven't done these exercises and then you can slowly increase it and make it more flexible. Bring that over. Again, you do the other arm. Just do that a couple of times. And if you want, you can put a little pressure there, but not much, especially if you haven't done it before. So these are coming across the front here. Now, the next time we do it, we're gonna actually uh, start, start uh, doing it and we're gonna go towards the ceiling. It, so it's, this is a little bit higher here. Before we were doing it here, now we're gonna go here. So there's one. Two, and you go at your own pace. And you can see that that really starts to work your shoulders, your back, your laterals. And you go towards the ceiling. That's a couple of simple exercises. Uh, another one I like to do when I'm seated, and these can be done standing as well. You just put your arms out and you, you're rowing. You're just gonna row. Just reach out, you're rowing. Breathing the whole time. If you wanna breathe just through your nose, that's great. Okay, wonderful. Good job, everybody. Those are some that you can do. Anytime you have time in the day, you can do them two times a day or three times a day for a few minutes. The next thing I want to go over is I'm going to talk a little bit about Tai Chi and like the other programs, these also have warm ups. Before you start every class, you need to warm up. So I'm going to show you a, a couple of Tai Chi warm up exercises. So again, you can do this seated if you want. Most of all these programs for elders, especially, you can do all the exercises, you can adapt them seated. If you, if you need to start seated and eventually we hope that you do them standing up. 
But if you do them seated, that's wonderful. They're actually, some of them are very challenging to do seated. So it's not like you're, you're not getting exercise. You'll definitely get exercise from all these, whether seated, uh, seated or standing. So, so just relax, bring your feet, just shoulder width a little bit, set them apart here, shoulder width, relax. And as you relax, you wanna kind of keep your belly in. You wanna pretend there's a string here. Keep yourself nice and tall. Even though I'm gonna be looking down, I'm still elongating my, my neck here. So look in front of you, open your legs, relax. This is a Tai Chi warm-up exercise. So with your head down, as you inhale, you bring both hands up slowly. You just, you're slowly bringing your hands up, okay? And when you get to this part, you wanna turn your palms and bring them towards you. So you're turning your palms. So you're breathing, turn your palms towards you. And as you turn them towards you, you're gonna bring them towards your chest a little bit. And while you do that, you're actually gonna push your chest, you're gonna pu push your chin back, okay? It's not like you're touching your chin. You're actually just, you're bringing your hands up, palms towards your chest. And as you do that, you move your chin back. So a lot of times as we get older, we're, our, we start to, our back starts to curve a little bit, right? And so when we do this, bring your hands up, palms facing towards you, and you just gently move your chin as if you're moving your chin back. And that you can see this, this, this part here, when you, when you become aware of your own body, you can actually start to change it. So one of the first steps in all these processes is just an awareness. And Tai Chi in particular is very, very meditative. So just bring your hands up, turn your palms. As you bring your hands towards your chest, you just slightly push your chin back as if you're pushing your chin back, okay? So that, that's one of the neck exercises. Tai Chi warms up from the top down. And so that's a neck exercise. So. Too. I just wanted to give you um, a heads up that we've got about um, seven minutes left and we did have some questions come in. So just, just a heads up to you for time management. Okay. I think uh, that's a, that's a good exercise right there. Uh, I think we can just uh, leave it there. There's, there's a number of Tai Chi exercises. That's a warm up exercise. There's a matter of balance. There's enhanced fitness. Uh, there's a steady toolkit. There's the go for life. Uh, if you need more information, I'll be more than happy to send you information out there. I could perhaps try to contact a person in the in the area in your area uh, to try to help you find one of those classes. Since I'm a master trainer, uh, I have access to to some um, uh, networks, and I can I can try to help you find a, a person or a place where you can learn. And perhaps even you could perhaps even join me. Uh, at, in a class when I launch a virtual uh, class in the next couple of weeks. So thank you very much. I'm going to take questions now. Great. Thank you so much for that um, presentation and demonstration. So um, we did have a few questions um, come through about um, sending the presentation and posting the presentation. So I just want to let folks know um, that you can send an email to um, the LTSS info at kaufmaninc.com and we, um, we did put that email address in the chat box. So um, if you'd like a copy of the presentation, you can send an email to that address and then um, we will be posting the slide set and the recording to um, cms.gov on the um, tribal LTSS technical assistance center. Um, so that uh, we've we've got a couple of questions here for you, C2. Um, the first one is, will you be a presenter at the 2021 American Indian Elders Conference this year? You know, I, I was I was going to go to that conference last year and I was thinking I had been asked to present. Uh, there was a chance for me to present. Uh, perhaps I will. If you know, uh, if you'd like to contact me, I can certainly try to make that a presentation, especially with your request. Uh, you know, that, that would be wonderful. I would like to be there. So uh, let's just see if we can do it. Let's see. I'd like to, thank you. Thank you. So the next question is, um, does the physical and occupational therapists do the study algorithm? I find speech therapy is invaluable if, 
if there is dementia also. Repeat that one more time. Sure. So um, do the physical and occupational therapists do the study algorithm? Yes. 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 Uh, as the physical therapist primarily uh, runs, runs that. And so when it's in, so the study is a toolkit and, and uh, the physical therapist will come out and, and teach it to the uh, community health workers, the public health nurses, doctors, uh, people who work in the community uh, in public health. She'll come out and teach the class so that they're aware of the process. But there's an, uh, an implementation process in that implementation. That's when all these different people come together and they actually will go take an individual through these different modules. And they will come out with actually a paper document that says where they're at in regard to fall risk. There'll be a podiatrist, there'll be a pharmacist, uh, the housing uh, department will be there. Uh, hopefully there's gonna be some uh, injury prevention from IHS or the local tribal injury prevention. It, it's, a, it's a very holistic way to look at, at fall prevention. So you, you understand fall prevention, you'll get education, the individual will get education, but they'll also leave knowing uh, with the document where they're at as far as uh, fall risk. So yes, yes, thank you. That's a really good question. Great, thank you. Um, next question is, how do you engage tribal, um, how do you engage tribal elders to participate who think they are not at risk for a fall? Um, well, we have to have a lot of, a lot of collaboration uh, so there's senior centers that we collaborate with, and they're one of our main uh, wellness centers, uh, one of our main uh, partners. There has to be uh, um, uh, uh, an individual that that's actually that's that's a challenge. That's one of the challenges that I'm working on. But the way that I'm dealing with it, this next go around for this next five years is part of my strategy is for myself to teach it myself. So I'm going to be teaching uh, matter of balance. I'm, I'm going to be teaching Tai Chi and I'm going to be teaching uh, uh, enhanced fitness. And I'm going to have different strategies for that in the hopes that we'll be able to find different types of, of community members who are willing to either do moderate exercise, more meditative exercise, or discussion-based uh, fall prevention. It depends on where the individual is. If they've fallen before and they're kind of having a fear of falling, we really suggest matter of balance. Uh, but it's also about the peers. And so we, we usually, uh, if, if we have a good class, we find that the word of mouth in Indian country is, is going to be always the best. So what's the story that they're hearing out there in the community? Hey, there's this good class, this wonderful person who's teaching it. And that's, that's kind of the next strategy. We're trying to uh, really talk about implementation is where it's at. How are you implementing it? Are you making it a happy and, and a wonderful place? At Aztec, we have support from our tribal leadership. So we usually provide, if we're doing in-person trainings, we provide lodging, we'll provide uh, food and beverages and snacks and everything. And so that's one of the things that we do as, at Aztec, but it, that's a good question. And the way that I'm uh, approaching that this next five years is actually implementation. Really, it's gonna be about implementation and the person who's doing it has to love what they're doing. That's a key. Great, thank you for that response. Um, and then we did have someone ask, um, how can programs sign up or register for the virtual classes that you mentioned? So I'm going to be uh, rolling that out and I will uh, be in contact with Joanna uh, and, and um, this program here. So I, I'll, I'll try to get that link out to you right now. <laughs> I'm really, uh, my focus is to work with the tribes in our area and the Indian Health Board tribes, the six consortium tribes. There should be room for individuals though uh, who are outside the area. So I will make that available to you. If you want to reach out to me and my email, I'm going to put that in the, in the text uh, now. Um, there's my contact. You can reach out to me and I can send that to you as an individual. Uh, but being that it's virtual, I'm hoping that we'll be able to reach other individuals. That's one of the benefits of actually being virtual is that we may be able to get to individuals that we weren't able to uh, in the past. So thank you. And I, and I will, uh, Look forward to potentially having participants uh, that we're watching today. Uh, it's been a pleasure to be here. Uh, my name is Sixo Dominguez with the Indian Health Board, Albuquerque Area Southwest Tribal Epidemiology Center. And if you have further questions, feel free to reach out to myself or Joanna, 
and we will get back to you as soon as possible. Great, thank you so much, Seek Stu. Um, we, we did have um, a couple of questions that we weren't able to get to, so I just wanna let those folks know that um, we do have your contact information from the registration. So if you asked a question that hasn't been addressed yet, we will send that over to, um, to Seek Stu for a response. So, um, but it is the, the top of the hour, so we're gonna go ahead and conclude. And so I wanna thank you so much, uh, Seek Stu, for joining us today and sharing these resources to support injury prevention and independence for Native elders. Um, and in closing, I'd like to remind everyone that uh, we did record today's webinar and the audio and the presentation slides will be available at cms.gov on the Tribal LTSS Technical Assistance Center. So thank you again for joining today's webinar and our session is now concluded.